I realized I was more supervising death than actually saving lives because I didn't know what to do. And it's not just me, it's just all of us didn't know what to do because, well, what I don't taught emergency care, it was really part of the cur cur curriculum. I was very clear that I need to learn emergency care to save lives. Yes, I couldn't, I know medicine and fine, I can treat you if you have malaria, I can treat you if you have pneumonia, but if you are dying, I probably will not be able to save your life. Unlike many Western countries, Africa and, and many other low and middle income countries do not have emergency healthcare systems. The focus has always been on vertical programs like malaria, TB, HIV, but not really focusing on looking at um, the emergency healthcare aspects. This is actually despite the fact that all these patients who uh, come up with the vertical programs at some point do need emergency medical care. And unfortunately, with no working system, uh, essentially in an emergency, everything pretty much fails and most people die not necessarily because of the disease that they have but because they actually could not get that acute immediate care. We don't have any 999 112 um, number. There is no single number you can call to get an ambulance service. So most of the people get hospital by private means whether it's a neighbor's taxi or your own car if you're driving. The other part of it is we've not really had designated emergency departments. So most of the time you'll just be taken to the nearest healthcare facility, but it's very clear not every healthcare facility has the capacity to handle emergencies. This contributes significantly to the mortality again or the uh, mobility for these patients because yes, they go to hospital and may have gotten to hospital on time, but because there was no system at the emergency department level, at the entry level, then the patients pretty much uh, potentially die waiting to, see, to get care. When I came back in 2012, the only thing we had was a constitution that said every Kenyan has a right to emergency medical treatment. But since then, we've had significant legislation. We now have dispatch centers that are mushrooming uh, in the various counties to provide that central coordination of ambulance services and having a number to call for the county ambulance to come pick you up. So I'd say in the last 12 years, there's been significant um, understanding, significant growth around emergency care, and a lot of the foundation has been laid out, and now it's just a matter of scaling it up to make sure that it cuts across the country. Before we trained them, no one survived cardiac arrest in their hospital. And subsequently from our training, they actually have seen patients come back, um, get their pulse back and uh, return of circulation just because they're now well trained. So I think emergency care is the one thing that there is just instant gratification. You're able to really provide that timely care that will pretty much make that difference in terms of whether you live or die. You have an emergency and you don't need to worry, you don't need to panic, you don't have to think, where am I going, who am I calling, uh, how am I getting there, you don't really have to think about that. You just have to remember the one number called dial 999-112 and everything has to be taken care of for you. You don't panic because you've been hit by a bus, you just lie there and the system takes care of you. So that's really what we're trying to figure out in our Kenyan context where the system just takes care of you.